We're gonna teach you how to set up 40, 50, maybe even 60 different styles of tanks. No joke, no scam, no clickbait. Clownfish, seahorse, octopus tanks, euphelia, anemone, predator tanks, lionfish, schooling, cuttlefish, invert tanks, lobster, frogfish, eel, macroalgae tanks, foxfish, cold water marine, pipefish tanks, Christmas tree rocks, rock flower nems, barnacles, scallops, and whatever else you can think of. We're gonna do all the research, set it up, and show it to you in one easy to digest video per style. Just so I don't have to buy a second home to house 50 different tanks, we have chosen around five different tank stand combos. Using these tanks as our starting point, we will go through each style of build that best suits each tank and how to adapt the tank for each setup. This year plus journey starts Introducing the innovative marine Nuvo Fusion Peninsula Pro 2 14 gallon aquarium bundle with the matching APS stand. A small but sexy little tank. This six millimeter thick low iron glass beauty is well thought out and comes with a whole lot of gear. 20 inches long, one foot wide and 13 inches deep. This innovative marine bundle comes with a self leveling foam mat a controllable and ultra silent DC Mighty Jet return pump, a 200 micron filter sock, custom caddy media basket with mechanical filtration fiber balls, activated carbon and a GFO pack, pre-assembled mesh screen, single and double headed lock line return nozzles, a magnetic glass cleaner, an adjustable water height riser and a user guide. Although definitely small enough to place on a sturdy desk or end table, we are going to be placing ours on the matching APS stand. Coming in either a white or black matte finish, this APS stand took me about one hour to assemble. Made from 100% recycled aluminum, the adjustable height MDF shelf really helps utilize the entire interior space and keep all of your gear organized. Although not a large tank by any stretch of the imagination, the elongated shape and two large viewing panels make it seem larger than it actually is. While the 14 gallon IM Peninsula tank can certainly function as a standalone option, it is really a great size for the end of your desk, for a workspace tank, maybe on top of a nurse's station, in a schoolroom, or on top of a chest of drawers in your bedroom. And just because it is small doesn't mean it isn't mighty. Rather than focus on all of the things you can put inside a 14 gallon aquarium, here are some ideas of what you can put inside. A fowler tank with small fish, clownfish and anemones, a zoa garden, soft corals, a euphelia garden, a pistol shrimp and goby pear, a mixed reef, maybe a whole bunch of rock flower nems, or possibly an invert only tank. Those are just some of the ideas. There are so many more cool things you can put in this system. We're gonna start by putting the stand together, but if you didn't purchase a stand, then go ahead and skip the this timestamp right here to start on the tank. Carefully unbox everything and place it on a soft surface like cardboard, carpet, or a rug. The aluminum edges can be sharp and could scratch your wood floors. Remove the protective plastic stickers from the aluminum pieces. The hex torque wrench is included, but you'll also need a Phillips head screwdriver. All of the aluminum pieces are locked together using that hex torque wrench. In order to be installed, make sure that all the pieces are in the unlocked position with the dot pointing away from the center. After you finish the assembly, but before placing the tank on top, double check each tension lock to be sure it's securely fastened. Two more quick notes for you before we go on. There are two channels in each of the aluminum pieces and the tension lock will always go in the smaller channel. And lastly, you will secure each tension lock by using the torque wrench, turning it clockwise until the dot faces the center of the piece. Moving on, take four of the plastic end caps and place two on the top and two on the bottom of one of the frames. Don't worry if they don't fit snugly because once the stand is upright and the tank placed on top, they will be secured just fine. Take one of the top bottom profiles and lock it into place. Remember that the tension lock goes into the smaller of the two channels. 
This can be a bit tricky because you need to make sure the profiles perfectly line up with the end caps. After tightening the profile, if it's not perfectly flush with that plastic end cap, then just loosen the tension lock and try again. Now find the bottom front profile, which is the one without the APS logo on it. Tighten it into place flush with the plastic end cap, being sure that the smooth portion faces the bottom and the magnetic locking mechanism faces towards the stand. Select two of the horizontal cross profiles and install them at equal distances between the two profiles you've already installed. You don't need to be exact here as these are only gonna support the bottom board. Now moving to the top of the stand, find the three remaining profiles and lock them into place. The two larger profiles belong directly across from their lookalike pieces, while the smaller profile belongs right in the middle between the other two pieces. Again, be sure that the two end pieces have the smooth side facing the top and that they're installed completely flush with the plastic end caps. Align up and attach the second frame to the first. This may require some gentle bending to fit all of the tension locks into the proper channel on the new frame. Lock all seven of the profiles into place, being sure that the four corner profiles are completely flush with the plastic end caps. Place the four remaining plastic end caps onto the open ends. Then peel off the adhesive backing to the protective feet and place them on the four bottom end caps. Flip the stand onto its base. The plastic end caps may fall out at this point, so just put them back into place before fully upright. Double check that all of the tension locks are fully tightened and that the stand is level. If it's not level, identify the problem area and use the torque wrench to adjust the pieces as necessary. Locate the larger bottom board and slide it into place. Insert and tighten the four shelf locks into the small chain channel at the inside of the stand. These locks are going to support the second shelf and it's up to you where you want to place it. To make my life a little easier, I just used a one foot ruler to make sure they were all placed at the exact same height. Then place the smaller shelf on top of the newly installed shelf locks and be sure that it's level. If it's not level, just make adjustments to the shelf locks as necessary. To install the door, begin by placing the male end of the door into the bottom white pivot bracket. Move the door and bracket all the way to the left. Next, insert the top male end into the female pivot bracket. In order to do this, you will need to slide the upper bracket to the right while keeping the lower bracket to the left. Once the door is inserted to both the top and bottom brackets, slide the door all the way to the left and then use that Phillips head screwdriver to tighten the brackets into place. Give the door a quick try to make sure it functions properly and make any adjustments as necessary. Lastly, screw the top panel onto the four plastic end caps using the included screws. Make sure that the top panel is properly aligned and don't over tighten the screws. With the hard part done and out of the way, now we're on to the fun part. There is very little you actually need to do to set up the tank, so just start with unboxing it and removing everything from their protective wrappers. Go ahead and remove everything from the rear filtration chamber. Peel off the plastic covering on the rear panel. Gently removing the high tide water level will likely help you with this task. Decide whether you're gonna use the filter sock or the custom acrylic caddy. There's no right or wrong answer here and you will likely go back and forth over time depending on your needs. If you do go with the caddy, leave the filter balls in place but remove the carbon and GFO packets for now. Put the Mighty Jet return pump into place, being sure the input is facing away from the side of the tank. Slot the outlet through the acrylic rear panel and choose which lock line nozzle to use. I'm gonna use the single head today. Lastly, slide the mesh screen into place and you're done. To light up this tank, we're gonna use the AI Prime 16 HD with the 12 inch flex arm. You could go with the 18 inch flex arm, but I found that to be just a little bit too long and it caused a lot more light spill outside of the tank. We've chosen the Aqua L 75 watt heater because its slim profile easily fits into the small rear filtration chamber. Just because I don't wanna manually fill this tank up every day, I have chosen the Reef Breeders Prism Auto Top off unit. We still need to choose our rock and our sand, but we're going to wait on that for a little bit. There are so many things you can do with this tank. So many cool critters, corals, and fish. We are going to put together four or maybe five completely different styles using this innovative marine 14-gallon peninsula. 
it may be time to finally set up your first tank or add that office tank. Check out this playlist right here to see everything we do with this tank. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.